in this video I'm going to end up my talk about the uh, chronic liver disease I'm going to talk about the autoimmune hepatitis and autoimmune hepatitis from the name is that an autoimmune disease okay when the body forms autoantibodies against the liver tissue you know in the auto immune diseases the body misunderstand the normal uh, body antigens as a foreign body and they start to attack uh, themselves the body start to attack itself okay so and always almost always you find other autoimmune diseases or concordance between autoimmune diseases so the autoimmune hepatitis may be associated with other autoimmune diseases like SLE okay so SLE may be associated with uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis uh, any other autoimmune disease okay we have two types of autoimmune hepatitis type 1 we have auto antibodies against what against the nucleus of the hepatocytes anti-nuclear antibodies and anti-smooth muscles antibodies okay so anti-nuclear antibodies and anti-smooth muscle antibodies the asthma type 2 more severe than type 1 okay and we have antibodies we call it the LKM liver kidney microsomal antibodies and actually in this table we have uh, some differences between the type 2 and type 1 type 1 again is against the anti-nuclear antibodies smooth muscle antibodies and other other things okay type 2 autoimmune hepatitis is liver kidney microsome antibodies okay Ge geographical variation oh, they are worldwide uh, the type 2 is rare in North America okay sex of patients uh, female most uh, two types uh, are more in females okay they are both associated with other autoimmune diseases okay so I the, the important thing here I want to focus in the treatment failure actually the free treatment failure in type 2 is more it's more frequent than in type 1 Okay, so it is worse than type 1. Type 2 is more severe and worse. And also, relapsing after drug withdrawal is more common in type 2. And it needs longer treatment. I'm going to get into that, okay, after a while. Now, let's start with the clinical picture of autoimmune liver disease or autoimmune hepatitis. Maybe just a mild elevation of liver enzymes without any symptoms asymptomatic increase in liver enzymes patient may present with chronic liver disease manifestations liver cirrhosis symptoms ascites hematemesis melina uh, caput medosa and other things you know about the chronic liver disease I talked about okay fatigue malaise jaundice it is a liver disease okay signs of liver chronic liver disease okay i told you about the, we, we may have extra hepatic manifestations as a presence of other autoimmune disease like nephritis, hemolytic anemia, thyroiditis, SLE, and any other autoimmune disease may be associated with autoimmune hepatitis. Okay, and now how to diagnose the autoimmune hepatitis? Actually, the diagnosis is mostly by characteristic histological finding on biopsy, liver biopsy, plasma cell rich portal infiltrate is the characteristic histological findings okay associated with gamma globulin you find gamma globulin the auto antibodies the asthma the anti uh, smooth muscle antibodies the anti nuclear antibodies or the anti liver kidney microsomal antibodies okay this is the diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis please remember it the management now just like wilson disease we have management for compensated liver and decompensated liver if the liver now is good it is compensated with drug you will start with a prednisone initially corticosteroids because it is an autoimmune disease so you treat with steroids and after remission you can start with immunosuppressive uh, drugs okay so this is for the compensated liver the liver is uh, uh, relatively good 
at the time of diagnosis okay some patients need immunosuppressive therapy for their life especially in type 2 okay type 2 need lifelong term maintenance of therapy okay and some patient can stop it without with me monitoring okay so the uh, treatment sometimes is for life long like in type 2 sometimes you can stop it with uh, some good monitoring for liver function test okay so if the this is if the liver is compensated you give prednisolone initially after remission if the situation is good you have to give immunosuppressive therapy sometimes for lifelong sometimes for some time okay the decompensated liver if the liver is is failing okay failed you have to do liver transplantation but pay attention that in the autoimmune hepatitis the uh, disease may recur because the problem is in the auto, uh, uh, in the immune system more than in the liver okay in wilson disease i told you that the liver transplantation is almost always curable okay but in autoimmune hepatitis no it may recur because the problem is in the immune system so this is all about the autoimmune hepatitis and by this i end up my talk about the chronic liver disease i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching see you in the next video